Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. So good to be gathered together with you once again around an open Bible to exalt the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Indeed, welcome to Faith to Live By. Whether you are watching or whether you are listening, so good to be gathered together with you to exalt our Lord and Savior. We begin with glorious music, and here is Heidi, Ruth, and Matt to sing Like a River Glorious. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's holy word in order to find the answers. Question number one, why was special treatment shown to Peter, James, and John if God is no respecter of persons? Indeed, Jesus had as many as 70 disciples, we are told, but 12 were the ones who we most especially focus on and we have their names. The others are essentially anonymous. But even within the 12, there were three that stand out as termed as the inner three, Peter, James, and John. We have, for instance, in Luke chapter 8, verse 51, when Jesus was in the synagogue official's house, Jairus's house, healing, or actually raising from death, Jairus's daughter, we read that Jesus did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the girl's father and mother. 
in the next chapter, chapter 9 and verse 28, we're on the Mount of Transfiguration. And once again, nine of the disciples are absent, but Peter, James, and John in Luke chapter 9 and verse 28, they are there. Again, in Gethsemane, the 12, or rather the 11, Judas being absent, the 11 are there, but in the inner part of the garden, closest to Jesus, there once again, Peter, James, and John. And so it would seem that special treatment indeed was shown to them. Now, regarding the statement, God is no respecter of persons, we go to the words of both Peter and then Paul, Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul, in Acts chapter 10, verse 34, Peter is preaching in Cornelius's house. He is no longer on Jewish uh, territory, at least in a Jewish home. He is in the home of a Gentile. And Paul is writing to a Gentile church in Rome. And both of them make this declaration that God is no respecter of persons. How do we put the two together? Indeed, in salvation, God is no respecter of persons, and he will, he will call unto himself those who have ears to hear. But in terms of service, right from the Old Testament, we find that there were examples of some who carried heavier responsibility and others who carried, it would seem, lighter responsibility. And so here we have it that Jesus was seeking and he was searching out and appointing those who would carry larger responsibility as well as those perhaps who would carry less from at least our perspective. Only God knows exactly what he was carrying out. And so indeed, we have it both that God is no respecter of persons, that those who fear him, as Peter declared in Cornelius's home, Acts chapter 10, they are welcome to him. They are gladly ushered in. However, in terms of service, there is to each of us gifts which are given, and some use them in a more public and front forward way, and others would seem, once again, speaking in this world's terms, to have a lesser role, but only heaven will tell, only heaven will tell the great things that have been done which have not been in the spotlight. Question number two, what does 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 mean, especially regarding clergy and laity, the division which is frequently made there? This question ties in, though it comes from a totally different direction, with our first question, a very similar response I must give. But let me read 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Peter says, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 500 years ago, at the time of the Reformation, one of the most forefront principles that was reclaimed, that was brought back to its proper place, was the priesthood of every believer, everyone who is trusting in Christ, that we do not need to come through an intermediary to Jesus Christ, but each and every one of us, even as the priests of the Old Testament, we are privileged to come with a direct access into the presence of God, the priesthood of every believer. And here, the Apostle Peter says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. And he is speaking not simply to the leadership of a church, but he is speaking to every believer indeed. We have a division which is often made between clergy and those who simply sit in the congregation, and I don't mean any disregard in that. The congregation is vital, and the using of the talents and the skills, the gifts which God has placed there, that is utterly essential. 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 4 to 7, the Apostle Paul speaks about the gifts of God. Here, let me read a few verses. He tells the Corinthians who were big, big, big on gifts and they were puffed up comparing gift with gift. He says, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. Then down verse 14 of this same chapter, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body. It is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. And Paul, he was trying to bring balance. He was trying to bring sense to the Corinthians who had lost their heads. And he was saying, look, you are all vital. Those who once again are more in a forefront place and those also who would seem to be in a lesser role seemingly in this world. Also, the Apostle Paul speaks in Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 11, 12, and 13 are key in this regard. He, God, gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the equipping of every believer. God knew what he was doing and he gave certain giftings in order that those blessings might flow to the entire body of Christ for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Peter he had it right when he said, you are a holy nation, you are a royal priesthood, you are chosen. And so Paul also helps us in understanding every believer is indeed a priest unto our God. We do not come through other means. We come directly into his presence. But each of us has received gifts, talents, he has placed within us what is needed for the building up of the church, and we must use those talents and gifts and abilities that God has given in order to praise his name and to use them with humility, with humility, which is a stark contrast, very sorry to say, with how they were used in Corinth 2,000 years ago. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Lois, Jan, and Rick now team up singing, I Have Found a Hiding Place. Jesus 
We are very quickly heading up towards Christmas in a few weeks' time, and Faith to Live by Resources is ever so pleased to release our Christmas CD for 2023. It's entitled Silent Night, the title song, of course, and there are 12 other songs of Christmas as well as scripture readings by our musicians that I know will bless your heart. These will surely go quickly, and so you will want to ask for your copy that you might enjoy it and share it with others prior to Christmas. Ask for your copy of Silent Night when you write this week to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6, or call our toll-free phone number one 833 367-3852 or use our website faith to live by dot ca. Heidi Taves now comes to sing the beautiful Holy City.
new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on its streets. The gates were open wide, and all who would might enter. We are considering together 1 Peter, the old fisherman who had walked with Jesus, called from the shore of the Sea of Galilee and from his fishing boat, from his father's employ. Peter, he is now an elderly statesman, and he is speaking, exalting the name of Jesus Christ and lifting up the glorious gospel by which he has been saved and by which each and every one of us come to peace with God. In verse 3 of the first chapter, he writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his great mercy, it's not because of our works, it is because the merciful, the mercy of God has been poured out upon us. Blessed be the God and Father, Paul, Peter tells us, his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We drop down now to verses 10, 11, and 12. And Peter says, as to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made careful searches and inquiries. Peter is referring to those prophets in the Old Testament who foretold, they saw what was coming on ahead of them. Among them were Isaiah. And here they were looking down to see what God was doing. Peter says, about this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace, the unmerited favor, that is, of God, that would come to you. What a statement that is, that the grace of God has come to us and that we are the ones who are so favored and so blessed and that there were prophets from hundreds and even thousands of years ago who wanted to know more about this grace. They saw it as such a great thing. They wanted to know more. They made careful searches and inquiries, Peter goes on, seeking to know what person or time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. There was a stirring within their hearts and they were eager to know more about what the Lord was doing and what was coming on ahead. But Peter here says, two different things. The Spirit of Christ within them was indicating that there was sufferings to come and also glory. 
That is vital for each and every one of us, even as it was with Christ. There was suffering and there was glory. For you and for me, sometimes we go through hard times and difficult paths. There is suffering and there is glory that is most assuredly to follow. The prophets, they wanted to know more about this. The prophets, they also, many of them suffered horribly. You read at the end of Hebrews chapter 11 about those prophets. Some of them were tortured. Some of them were sawn in two. They were stoned. They were treated in the most abominable way. The sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow, it was revealed to them. They didn't find it out themselves, but the Lord revealed it. There was a revelation that was made to them. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, but you. Peter is speaking to his first century audience, but down through the years, he also speaks to us. These prophets, they were not serving themselves, but they were serving us. The kindness of God once again reaching out to us. They were serving you in these things which now have been announced to you through those who preached the gospel to you. Things into which the angels long to look. The glories of the cross and that Jesus went there out of his love for your eternal soul and that he died and that our sin was placed upon him in order that his righteousness would come to us. Oh, trust in him and rejoice in all that God has done for you today. Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 